this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Elgato Stream Deck Plus. This is the latest iteration of the Stream Deck lineup, and one that actually comes with dials now, as you can see. It also has a little touch strip across the middle, which has a function that allows you to switch between various things. And as you can see, it's capable of using GIFs and all sorts of other things. Now I'm unboxing this and showing off what you can do with it and talking about the highlights of it and what the various things are for. Those dials, for example, are multifunction. And as with other things, you can create multi-action buttons, folders, and also pages and pages of various different controls for a variety of different options. Now I just recently looked at the Razer Stream Controller, which also has some dials on it, and I'll link to that video in the description. I'm going to do a comparison with the two in the near future, because I think they're worth talking about the differences between them. If you don't know already, and if you've not seen one before, the Stream Deck is a pretty powerful tool, which allows for a lot of different customization and options for controlling a variety of things. You'll see, for example, I've got Elgato's key light set up here. I also have a profile set up for going live when streaming, but you also have a variety of other things that you can control, including Discord, Spotify, Twitch, you can see I've set up one for DaVinci Resolve, so you can do video editing and tweak things around in there. You can basically create custom events and all sorts of things and programs and buttons. And as you can see, you can just swipe across that middle strip to get access to a variety of other things. And then you can tap on some of those actions and then also push the dials in to turn things on and off. So you can turn lights on and off and then you can adjust the brightness of them and you can do other things, obviously, with Philips Hue, with Elgato products. If you watch out uh, for Elgato's own uh, sort of product videos on this, you'll see them controlling their new webcam with it. So you can sort of control the positioning of the webcam and the zoom with the dials and other things like that. And you can do all sorts of pretty clever things with it. And so it's a very handy tool in a number of ways. The Stream Deck's a really powerful one. I've done some videos in the past on the various different things that you can do with it, including using it for clipping audio sources and then playing those things back on your stream. But at a basic level, you can do all sorts of things like just muting your microphone if you need to, or muting people in Discord by just pressing a single button so that they can't be heard, switching Discord channels, turning on Philips Hue lighting, and there's some also powerful multi-action controls where you can just basically press one button and activate a variety of different functions. Or if you're just sitting at your desk and you want to listen to the music, you then have media control. So you can see I've set up a Spotify page here. We can just play, pause music, and whatever else. You can see what track's currently playing. You can copy that data. You can like a song. You can start a playlist off from scratch. And you'll see that I also have different volume controls set up on the dials for this profile so that I can control system volume. But I can also adjust Discord volume and Spotify volumes and Chrome volumes all separately. There's also some powerful integration with Elgato's Waves Link software in this so that you can adjust volumes independently. I've done some content on the Wave Link previously, and this basically integrates with that so that even without the microphone, so even without a Wave 3 microphone, you can basically tune the levels of various different audio sources sort of on the fly with these touch buttons. So as you can see, a pretty powerful thing in a variety of ways. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the box. You can see it's quite a chunky beast and coming from the Razer Stream Controller, which by comparison is quite small and sits quite low on your desk, this thing kind of stands quite tall on the desk and sort of stands loud and proud. It doesn't look like it has quite as many buttons going on for, as a comparison to like the Stream Deck XL, for example, but you have foldering abilities and obviously pages and pages that you can set up. So there's plenty of options in there. Now I think it's important to note that when you plug it in and connect it up to your PC, you'll end up with a screen that looks something like this with nothing on it. And this means you then have to go into the software and then set it up. And this is the biggest complaint that I have about this is just the amount of effort you have to put in to sort of populate the screens with the things that you want to do. The nice thing about it is the customization and what you can do. So I'm gonna show you some examples. I'm starting with OBS, basically dragging in various different things. I'm setting up record missions 
and I'm going to basically download icons for it, set up record buttons, playback buttons, live streaming buttons, and other things that you saw on the first sort of initial screens. So you can basically press those and activate the actions with ease. Now, if you click on the little button in the top right, you can go into a discover section within the Elgato sort of Stream Deck store. From there, you can download all sorts of things. You'll see there's various different icon packs. So that's how I got the different looks on the different pages. You can go through there. There's also plugins, sound effects, and music, and those are royalty free options. You can then obviously add buttons for those, and then you can use them on stream, for example. So there are a lot of potential things that you can do and there's a lot of nice customization for it but it does take a long time so it basically took me like three hours to get it set up for those shots that you saw in the beginning i got it set up in a realistic way of what i would use it for in a variety of different controls but it took me ages to do it because you've sort of got to work out what you're doing what icon packs you're going to use work out what buttons are going to go where whether you're going to use folders or whatever else and it's really important as well that if you do all this, that you export and back up your profiles. Because a number of times I've had issues with Stream Decks in the past where I've gone to reinstall Windows or something like that because I had to, and then suddenly I found that I don't have a backup for it, and then you have to do all this again. And that's part of the reason why I don't actually have any profiles now. I had to start from scratch. So that's my warning to you. One word of warning, one major annoyance with this is sadly it's no like cloud-based memory for it that I could find that I'm aware of, correct me if I'm wrong, and you have to sort of locally back up your files and then make sure you keep them somewhere safe if you want to not have to do this over and over again. It doesn't store it in the memory of the Stream Deck, it's all on your PC and the software needs to be running in order to make it happen. However, it is very flexible and there are a lot of things that you can do. You have a lot of different files, there are a lot of different sound effects that you can download and these are royalty free so you can use them on stream without any worries and so you have a lot of different sort of things that you can add in there and there's a lot of flexibility to it which is fantastic and that's one of the really nice things about it and it's also multi-use because as you'll see when you get into the plugin section there's all sorts of things that you can download from here as well you'll see spotify twitch obs studio streamlabs twitch tools youtube stuff Philips Hue. Obviously, it naturally works with Elgato products as well. So Elgato's key lights, Elgato's face cams, Elgato's various different mic things, so the Wavelink, for example. Naturally, it'll also work with IQ as well. So you have IQ integration in there and lots and lots and lots of other things. There's a lot of different options in here. And you can do really basic things from just having a little button that basically shows you how many people are watching your stream currently to a much more complicated setup where you can control your smart home lighting, you can turn some lights on and off in particular rooms, whether that's a whole room or individual rooms. If you've got a nice Philips Hue setup, you can really do that. Obviously, you can also use Elgato's light strips. The list goes on and on and on, and the number of things you can do is pretty nuts. It just requires quite a lot of setup and quite a lot of downloading things and then the logic of it. And what I found historically is that you have to sort of play around with it for a long time to get it into that sort of sweet spot where you're happy with the setup of it, but you can customize it a fair amount. And I just want to demonstrate some of that just to go through the pain of doing it. So on the first page, after I've downloaded a lot of the plugins and the icon packs and stuff like that, I went through the process of sort of selecting the buttons that I wanted. So basically on that first screen, I have a number of different buttons, which I'm going to customize. And so I'm starting with a record button, and then I've got a playback button, a go live button, a button to start the replay buffer and OBS, and then one for various different scene switching capabilities, and then a multi-action button, which I'll get to in a minute. You can assign an icon for each, and obviously you have the option to download icons from the pack, so you saw some of that already. There's a lot of different sort of icon packs that you can download and apply, and you can see this sort of process for it here. You basically assign an action by dragging it from the right-hand side into the box, go through, set up and choose an icon for it. Sometimes you have to assign sort of both sides of the icon, so what it will look like when the button's pressed and what it will look like when you press it again or when it's not pressed. So it can take quite a bit of a process and I'm just basically speeding up the sort of steps for it here 
just to show how much effort goes into it. But actually, this is a sort of time lapse of it because it actually takes a lot longer than that. It is worth putting the effort in and making sure you label things properly and use icons, and maybe little labels, so you know what's what. And then you end up with this sort of look. Now, the nice thing about it is I have two Elgato key lights. And you can see that you can sort of control those individually. So you can control the brightness of them. You can also control them from the strip. So the strip is multifunction because you can sort of press on them and activate actions in there. But also you can swipe between pages on it. You can see that you can also adjust the brightness of a thing itself from one of the dials. So you can set up a brightness dial on there too. And then you can do all sorts of things there. Now, one of the most powerful things about a Stream Deck, in my experience, is the multi-action functionality. This is something that's been around for a while. It's not exclusive to Stream Deck Plus. But what it does give you is the ability to add in multiple different actions into one button press. And this is really powerful and pretty cool. So I'm just going to whip through the steps of this here. But basically, you're just trying to work out what you want to do to get things happening in the way you'd like when you're starting your stream. In my example, what I'm essentially doing is I'm dragging in a variety of things that I'm going to start kicking off. So it's going to launch OBS, launch YouTube and open up my YouTube channel. It's going to put me in Discord and put me in a certain channel. It's going to turn on the key lights and then I have the ability to adjust them. It will set them at a certain brightness so they don't come on on like maximum brightness and blind me. And then it will basically have everything ready in a position that it would be where I can just start my game and then I can basically press the button to start recording or start streaming and it will have all the lights on and everything set up and that's just one single button press and that was what you'd seen in the top left corner of that first page on the stream deck. You can obviously apply this to all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be for streaming purposes. You might like your PC to be set up in a certain way. You might like some lights on, for example. You might like to listen to Spotify every time you start using your PC. You might do other things. Basically, you just press a button and it'll activate all those actions. It's basically setting up a macro of actions on one button press. You can also create a folder and then put things within there. So you're not limited to one lot of buttons. You could create a folder that you can click on and then you have a load more things inside there. So there's a lot of intelligence to it, but you can see the various steps here. So it opens OBS, starts OBS replay buffer, switches to a particular scene, takes me into a voice channel on Discord on a specific server, turns on the lights, sets the brightness on both lights to a specific brightness, which is about 20%, opens up the website on YouTube, and basically preps everything. And that's all with a single button press. So that sort of thing shows how powerful it is. Also, the wheels, so the dials are multifunction in that you can basically set up an action for rolling one way or rolling the other way. So you could see that you could adjust it in different ways there. And that allow us for quite a bit of capabilities in that department. So to demonstrate that, I went about creating a profile for a DaVinci Resolve. This is a page dedicated to editing in a Resolve because what I wanted to be able to do was to basically use this for productivity reasons. I've basically assigned actions to three of the wheels. One zooms in and out of the timeline. Another one scrubs through it frame by frame. And then the third one then also basically plays, pauses and skips back and forth in fast and slow ways so you can basically go through the timeline. I then created different buttons above that which, are, which have a variety of actions on them that allow me to mark tracks in and out, ripple, save, insert tracks, go to the fusion page and more. So you basically need to know what the button presses are for this. So you can use DaVinci Resolve settings to find the keyboard customization, work out what the shortcuts are, or indeed create your own. And then you can use a hotkey assignment from within the Stream Deck software, basically assign a hotkey to it, basically use the various different buttons that you've set up. So you can see Control Alt Shift F, for example, opens the Fusion tab in this one here. This is how I've set it up. And then you can basically press one button to do an action within there. Theoretically, this allows for better productivity and it demonstrates one of the things that you can do with it. Obviously, I'm using Resolve as an example, but you could use it with Premiere Pro or maybe Photoshop. And you can use not only the buttons, but the dials as well. If you have an action that works logically with a dial, then you can do that too. You just need to know sort of what buttons are going to do it. The nice thing about Resolve is you can program your own custom keyboard shortcuts 
Once you know what they are, you can then head over to the stream deck and assign them in. You can see that you can basically set one thing for rotate counterclockwise, one for rotate clockwise, and then another one for pushing the dial in. So you actually have three different actions that you control from there. On the right hand side of it, you'll see you also have a stack option and other settings. Actually, the dials at this point are kind of limited. You'll see that the options on the right hand side, for example, are less than the key actions. You'll see that there's stack, brightness adjustment, hotkey, media, adjust brightness on various different things and others. So their options are a bit limited at the moment. At the time of doing this video, the chances are there'll probably be more in future, but it does allow for some granular control and the ability to sort of zoom in and out of the timeline, scrub through it and then quickly edit things makes it a little bit easier because usually these require keyboard presses and mouse clicks. And so you're basically freeing up your hand or at least optimizing your workflow. One of the nice things that you can do with it, but again, it does take some time to program. So hopefully I've done a good job of showing you what's possible with the Stream Deck Plus. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and what you thought. Be sure to check out links in the description to more, as well as information from Elgato on other things that will work with. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.